Over to you, Das. Nice. Team, welcome to Record Breakers for Tuesday, the 19th of July. Um, this is a webinar full of sales pros, a lot of sales pros, a lot of sales leaders uh, jumping in to beat a new personal best in their sales walk, in their sales career. The funny thing is uh, when we talk about growth, so often as salespeople, we are somewhat addicted to growth. It just comes with part of the, um, part of the journey. The thing is when we realize what growth is, we realize that ultimately we have never grown unless we've actually broken some sort of record. And that's a pretty cool definition of it, Steve, when you think about it. We've probably only stumbled across that over, say, the last six months. Um, but ultimately, what we realize is that if we break a record, if we break a personal best, therefore, by definition, we have grown. If we haven't broken a record in a particular category, then you can suggest that we've probably still remained within somewhat of a comfort zone. Um, and so what we want to be able to do on this record is on this uh, webinar is give you opportunities, give you strategies, give you the psychology that's going to help you break that personal best that you have, whether that's sales numbers, whether that's a quantity of sales activity you want to complete, whether if you're in marketing, I know there's around about 10% of people here that are on marketing, uh, are in marketing, whether that's an actual uh, personal record you get in terms of email open rates or reply rates or click throughs, whatever it may be, always understand number one, what is my personal best? And number two, what am I aiming for in order to beat it? If you've got those two things, you're in the right spot. If you don't have those two things, you're still in the right spot. You just need to go get those two things. Love your work. So let's rip in for our psychology this week, team. Um, I was stupid enough over the weekend uh, on Wednesday to Sunday. I was insane, stupid enough to leave the warmth of Queensland, this beautiful Southeast Queensland sun that we got going on. And I made the trip down to Melbourne, back to the old stomping ground. Um, and embraced the cold. Now, the cold in Melbourne, there's cold, Steve? There is. Like, I get it. You know, it's been a little bit colder in Queensland than what we're used to. That's, that's, that's winter for you. But the cold in Melbourne is another monster. It's another beast all unto itself. Because do you know what it is? Do you know that feeling, Steve, where you always feel like you're on the verge of throwing up, like you're on the verge of being really sick, but you never actually get to the point? It's all, like, it's all yeah. wretched, no vomit. You are like yeah. constantly uncomfortable. That's the same with Melbourne, but in terms of weather. So it's so cold all the time, but it never fully, it never. Melbourne it, in general. You're just always, vomit. You're yeah, just always yeah, yeah. really ready to vomit. <laughs> but that's, it's, it's so cold, but never snows. See, we went to Queenstown around about, you know, I don't know. What was that? What was that, Jaden? Was that a year and a half ago? We're in New yeah, Zealand. You guys about that? Ago, I think, yeah. yeah. So that's awesome because it snows. So it's so cold, but it's kind of cute because it's like, oh, look, there's snow-capped mountains and here we are with the fire and the hot cocoa. That's great. I can get around that. At least it commits to being the coldest it can possibly be. But with Melbourne, it's so cold without snowing. And so all you're left doing is chilling. Anyway, what happened was me and my partner, Ash, we were like, oh, well, we got in uh, late Wednesday night. The first thing we needed to do was go grab dinner. Now we didn't have anywhere booked for dinner. So what we did was we just walked out onto the main street, the main thoroughfare and, you know, went and embarked on a, uh, on a, some sort of restaurant. Now in Melbourne, there is a lot of dumpling restaurants and I'm a big fan of dumplings, but here's what happened. I want to show you what happened. We walked up to this particular restaurant, dumpling restaurant, and it looked rather full. And that's why we were attracted to it. We looked inside and we're like, man, there's hardly a table spare. This, might, this place must go all right. Yep. Absolutely, mate. Good stuff. Close that deal. And so basically what happened was we walked up to this restaurant and uh, said to the woman, um, can we see the menu? And she shows us the menu. We look at it and we're like, uh, I don't know. Not really. Not really feeling it. And uh, she said, would you like to grab a table? And we said, oh, yeah, maybe, maybe. She said, oh, I'll be back. I'll be back. I'll be back clearly like trying to get us in me and my partner like ah oh, i don't know let's just go like we're not really that interested in these dumplings i mean it looks fine she comes back and she says ah oh, sorry um there's no tables left and our response was instead of it's all good we weren't interested anyway guess what our response was steve after that oh, point, oh really, oh, really? <laughs> oh you don't have any tables for us oh i kind of wish you did now we're like, okay, that's all right. If you don't have any tables, that's okay. That's fine. Um, maybe we'll come back. So anyway, we walked up the street and there wasn't really anything that we wanted in general. So we we're like, I kind of really want to go back to that dumpling restaurant. So we walked back there, walked back up the front. We said, hey, um, any tables left for us at all by any chance? She said, oh, 
no, we're closing really soon. We could maybe do takeaway for you if you're lucky. And as a result, our desire to eat at this restaurant went through the roof. So we went from a state of not at all wanting dumplings, not being interested, not interested in the menu in the slightest, not interested in the context of this record breakers conversation. Let's just say we weren't interested in the product. This wasn't about the product. What we became interested in was the fact that we couldn't get our hands on what we used to think we could. And this is a classic part of human biopsychology, which is this. Scarcity is one of the most underrated drivers of human buying decisions there is available. Please write that down. Scarcity is one of the most underrated drivers we have to buying decisions. Largely because of this, humans love to have what we previously couldn't have, or we love to want what we can't have. Okay? We love to want what we can't have. Babies will do this all the time. It starts at a very young age. For those of you that have really young children or little babies or even toddlers, a baby can be sitting there just watching TV or looking out the window, not playing with a particular toy. But the second you actually take that toy away is when the baby starts to cry, even though it had nothing to do with the toy a mere 10 seconds ago. It's, it's amazing. Um, Louis C.K. tells this story, Steve. It's uh, such a good one. He talks about one day he was on an aeroplane um, back, uh, uh, back when internet was first coming to aeroplanes. They sit down on the plane and uh, they, you know, you're reading the back of the card thing and it's clear like, hey, we have Wi-Fi on this plane. It was back in like 2005 or something. It's like, whoa, that's, that's technologically advanced. That's pretty amazing. Anyway, voice comes over the speaker on the aeroplane. This is, you know, Mr. Jonathan, your captain, uh, we apologize. The Wi-Fi won't be available on this flight. And he remembers the guy sitting next to him on the plane. He goes, oh, that'd be right. And Louis CK remembers thinking to himself, how, incre- how unbelievable that you are so annoyed that you now don't have access to something that you only learned existed a mere six seconds ago and your <laughs> whole flight is ruined now. 10 seconds ago, wouldn't have mattered. Six seconds ago, you could have had it. Now you can't. And so now your whole flight is ruined. It's fascinating. It's so irrational about human behavior and so irrational about human decision-making, but it works. It's so key. So please understand this. The more you can build scarcity into your sales approach, the more valuable your product becomes. And Steve's about to get into the strategy behind this, but I want to let you know that yes, you can have scarcity around your product, but please understand there's one thing on this planet that is the most scarce of all, and that is you because there is only one of you. And if you're more than happy to say no and more than happy to take yourself out of the buying equation, watch your value shoot through the roof where where they thought they used to be able to have you just willy-nilly because you're a salesperson, you'll do anything to make a sale. Watch what happens when you hold yourself in an esteem where you say, I don't have to be a part of this if I don't want to be. I don't have to sell this to you if I don't want to sell it. Watch the value of your product and the value of you shoot through the roof. And Steve's get, about to get into a bit of strategy behind this to bring it to life. So good, mate. So good. Uh, team, are you ready for... A, it's, it, we're going to go on a little mosey around the garden and I promise you we'll mm-hmm. land back where we're meant to start. Is everyone cool with we'll that? We'll hold you to that. Can we have some thumbs up in there? We're going to go on a little little garden. We're going to go for a little mosey, but I promise you we will arrive back where we're meant to, okay? So we're talking about <laughs> scarcity and we're talking about human beings want what they don't have. Okay, that's what Darcy's led us to so far. Very powerful stuff. I want you to know- letting them in, Steve. Yeah, awesome. I want you to know that certainty is another word that you want to write down because certainty is scarce, Mm. particularly in today's world. Would you agree? What's winning? Uncertainty or certainty? Mm. No, No prizes for guessing, right? So certainty is the game of business and sales. A bunch of people have said different things. They say sales is the transfer of enthusiasm. Other people have said sales is all about problem solving. Other people have said sales is all about insert whatever. We're all trying to say the same thing. And I want you to know what we're all trying to actually point at. Sales is a transfer of certainty. That's what it actually is. And anytime someone's bought from you, they were in a place of uncertainty They saw you have a solution that you were certain in and they bought into that, meaning they believed that the future was going to become more certain 
after they bought from you than before. Is this all making sense so far, Tim? Certainty is the game. And so what we want to do is we want to transfer certainty by us having certainty in four things. Certainty of the problem that the buyer has. Certainty of the solution that will solve that problem. Certainty that there's been social proof around both of those things. Mm. Other people have had those problems and other people have had them solved. But here's the big one. Certainty within. Mm. Certainty within you, the seller. You, the marketer. And team, let us know in the chat if this resonates. Have you ever been in a really desperate place of sales where you need that business and you're desperate for it? You can have all the right certainty of problem solution and even social proof, but you yourself will self-sabotage because you yourself are becoming needy. The reason you're becoming, becoming needy is you're only using one word and that is the word yes. You believe the more you say yes, the more money you will make. And that is true. Every time you hear the word yes in the business world, you receive money, but we lose something else. And what do you think that is, team? Darcy spoke about it just before. If someone says yes to you in the business world today, you receive money, but we lose. Hit me in the chat, team. Get there. Get there. Certainty. Time. We lose time. You saying yes to this right now has meant that you've lost time elsewhere. Why? Because you can only be in one place at one time. So every time you hear the word yes, and you say the word yes, you've got the opportunity for receiving money, but you lose time. And so salespeople believe, okay, so the game of business is I just keep saying yes, and I'll make money. It'll get you to a point and then you'll max out. Mm. Ever been really, really busy, but not, not have anything to show for it? Because you said yes to a bunch of things, but they may not have been the most valuable things you could do. Now in the world of sales, if we hear the word no, what do we get? I'll tell you, it's the opposite to the yes. <laughs> if we hear the word no, what do we get? We get time, but we lose what? Money. Thumbs up. Are we with me now, team? We're halfway around the garden. This is all going to land shortly. What happens to your certainty, team, if I remove the ability for you to say no? How much certainty can you have within yourself if from this day forth, you can no longer say no? You have to say yes to everything. How much certainty will those people have? Not much. Zilch. Why do you think people that have all the certainty in the world pretty much say no most of the time? Mm. My mentor said to me, Steve, let your yeses be defined by what you say no to, not the other way around. Pretty cool. Why does this matter? Well, if you want to have certainty within yourself, you have to have the ability to say no. Now, here's the million dollar question. What would you prefer, time or money? We got time, we got time equals money. We got both question mark. <laughs> Douglas, smart man. What happens if you have all the time in the world but no money to spend? How much value or influence can you create in the world? Some, but limited. That's what homeless people have. They have all the time in the world. They can spend it however they wish. They have no responsibility. However, they don't have any money. That's the trade-off. What happens if you have all the money in the world but have no time to spend it? How much money, how much value does the money now have? If it, if it ceases to have, have exchange value? No. So what's the riddle here? Well, you need both, right? And means the word yes and the word no should be equally as valuable because you need both. The game is figuring out how can I maximize time and money at the same time. That's the game. That's the game. And if I can have certainty in that, 
watch all of the problem solution and social proof ramp up this week. It's so mm. weird. As soon as you know who you can start saying no to, watch your ability to find problems, diagnose problems, offer a solution and have social proof go up. And the way we do it is we call it the defib or the shakeup. It's an e email script we've developed to get your dragged out, your long sticking deals that are neither yes nor no mm. out of your system. Because here's what you want in life. I don't care if it's a yes. I don't care if it's a no. What I care about is, is if it's neither. <laughs> Because if it's a neither yes nor no, what do we get, team? None of each. No money nor time. That's when you spend all your day doing something but got nothing to show for it. And so what you do is you get rid of the people that are in no man's land, the people that are just sticking along. They're ruining your pipeline and they're ruining your certainty. And they're there for vanity more than anything vanity. else, aren't they, Steve? You're like, how's your pipeline been? Yeah, it's looking good, man. What's about this deal, this deal, this deal? Yeah, they're all in no man's land. I guarantee you'll get better results if you're like, well, make them either a yes or a no this week, Ben. <laughs> you'll get better results even if it's a no. Why? You celebrate the fact you got your time back. How do you want to spend it? Mm. Every time you hear what, no, you should celebrate. I got my time back. How do I want to spend those 12 hours? That's how me and Darcy end up on golf courses, guys. We lose a deal. We go, hmm, we mentally committed 12 hours to that project. We don't have to do that now. Why don't we spend three of them on the Gold Coast strategizing how we can get the, all of that back? Sounds good to me. We've got the time available. Every time we win the deal, we celebrate because we've received money, but we go, okay, now we've got to spend that time to essentially execute on that responsibility. So get them out. And so instead of trying to make sales this week, try to help your buyers make a decision. And guess what the decision is? It's not yes. It's yes or no. Hear the difference? How much need do you have if I'm like, hey, Gabby, I want to help you make a great decision, whether it's yes or no, I don't care, as long as it's the best one. What we don't want to end up in is indecision where we're not sure which to go because that's not going to help you nor me. So let's figure it out together. You get to the end of it and you're like, Gabby, we're not a fit. Let me suggest you go talk to Adrian. I think Adrian will be a way better fit for you. Really? Yeah, yeah, I can't help you. You're not a fit for me, sorry. Oh, is there anyone I can refer you then? Yes, yes, you absolutely can. This is who we wanna see. And so here's the script team. First name, and please use this only after you've tried multiple outreach attempts with no success. Yeah, First people, people, um, people will read this, Steve. You, you hear a lot of like, oh, this shake-up email or this defib email, whatever it may be, it happens too early in the process and it's just like it's, uh, what's the word, somewhat um, convincing or manipulative or whatever. It's like, yeah. yeah, totally. If you do this in the first week after connecting with a buyer, it totally is. Please make sure you realise, team, this is used after you've exercised multiple That's options. You're trying to get through, there's no response. There's all of it. So all of that has been done before this is sent. We, we find the golden numbers is seven, seven. various yeah. creative touch points with no real traction. That's the golden number. Uh, by the way, team, we're going to break state for a moment. I've just got a direct message here from Josh Wiggins who mm. said, Gabby just won a 50K deal on this call. Can we all just blow up the chat for Gabby? Oh, say, man, Congrats, unreal. Gabby. Closing deals while she's learning. There's 96 people on here. Yes. Let's, let's encourage Gabby this week. Flipping love it. Good work. So good. Mm -hmm. All right, so here's the script. Look at that, mm. flying through. That's what we're all about, team. First name, we're in the process of closing files for the month. Typically, when I haven't heard back from someone, it means they're either really busy or aren't interested. If you aren't interested, do I have permission to close your file? If you're still interested, what do you recommend, recommend as a next step? Thanks for your help. That's it. Now, team, if they do not respond to this, delight in hitting the delete button, delight in shredding the proposal delight in removing it from your consciousness because mm. that's better for you than having the vanity of oh, i hope it might turn into something one day it won't it's either a yes or it's a no help them make a great decision it's either way that's it so team game this week for those that are joining the record breakers game it's not that at all i'm going to actually just show you it <laughs> mm -hmm. i've made it already um, Darcy, over to you while I'm getting this one 
Ripper team. Uh, so many of you have jumped in as always for the, oh, Steve, you just want to go back to that leaderboard for me for a tick? If you just, yeah, there's just a leaderboard you might want to go back to there. If that's, no, no, if that's no, cool. that's the record breakers. Yeah. Okay. Don't worry about it. Just, just a sales game in sort of the outbound company. Um, so this basically. <laughs> You ate, man. Uh, I'm about to log some stuff, and you're yeah, get smoked. Yeah, I'm, I'm not. A, I'm not looking forward to it. Uh, so, team, uh, I'll say you go for it, Steve. While we're on the topic, go for it. Yeah. So, 50 coins this week, team. If you send a shake up email, um, the script has been posted on the social feed, as you can see here. We've also put a link here for the 21 winning sales scripts. So, this nice. is just one script out of 21. So, if you want to uh, go there, just click that link, and you'll be able to download the 21 winning sales scripts as well. Um, so you get 50 coins a pop uh, for implementing that this week. Uh, the mission around it as well is where are the mover and shaker. If you send 10 of them this week, uh, you will hit 500 bonus coins. And also, check this out. Shout out to Travis Curry. What yeah, have you done, nice, mate? Trav. You've just absolutely smoked lumpy mail. I've never yeah, seen well someone done, send more lumpy mail in a week. So uh, cracking it. Um, and also the reward store is open team. So if you want to start claiming some shirts and whiskey glasses. Yes. I'll be sending um, out, um, I'll be sending out a bunch team this Thursday and Friday. I'm going to head down to the post office. Uh, we've got our first hoodie was ever claimed by Henry Mitchell. It's coming out to him this week. So if you do want to jump in and claim some hoodies, some t-shirts, uh, go for it. Um, I'll be in touch to find out your size as well. Um, and getting quick oh, because the sizes are limited. While well, Steve's doing that, team. Uh, next thing is our Proposify webinar. Give us a shout out in the chat, just a yes or a thumbs up if you're using Proposify or any other sort of proposal software uh, currently in your business. We'd love to know. Um, so basically, yeah, we got PandaDocs as well. Yeah, great. Yep, Josh Wiggins, team at Steel Corp, they're using Proposify, which is awesome. Basically, we've been fortunate enough to have Connor Cox who is the Chief Revenue Officer of Proposify, uh, join us for a webinar. It's going to be about 7 a.m. Canada time, but he's been uh, um, happy enough to join us for an upcoming whiskey webinar, which is awesome. We'll try and shove a whiskey down his, down his throat at about 7 a.m. It's interesting to see how he liked that. But essentially, uh, Steve has put the link in there in the chat. Uh, it's coming up on, what is it, Steve? It's August, August uh, 11th. 11th. It's so a little bit of a later one, so an 8 p.m. one just to help out with the Canada time, but that also helps people with after dinner and putting the kids to bed. So uh, 8 p.m., I believe, on August 11th. Come join us for how to set up a killer proposal in your company. Um, as salespeople, we all use proposals, yet so few of us understand what are the key metrics that actually shape buying decisions in a proposal. We want to make sure you're taken care of there. So feel free to click good. that link and we're away. Uh, big shout out to Grant and the whole team at Merch Department as well. Check this out. Got this like nice mm. moleskin journal. Another, another, sh another shameless plug, Steve. Shameless plug in. No, no, not shameless plug. Um, free Look sponsorships. At Look at these backpacks. These yeah. backpacks are sexy. They're sick. They got like laptop thing. You can even like chuck. There's like a little USB external thing as well. So if oh, you need a charge, talking. it's it's rad. So we're going to be loading them into the Wait, what does it charge store. off? So you can put in like a charger and then, you know, like if you've got a portable. Nice. And then it plugs in USB both ways. And then, so then you can. So good. Plug it in. It's sick. It's, You're a good it's, man, Grant. Really Shout out to Dylan Moore. Legend. Legends. Um, so yeah, we're going to, we're going to upload them into the reward store as well. So if you want a nice moleskin journal or a backpack as well, there's uh, some of them that'll be loading in shortly. Ripper. We're away team. Uh, August challenge is kicking off, of course, August 1st. We've got a number of you jumping in for that. Um, love to see you all a part of that and can't wait to kick that off with you. We were just putting some finishing touches around the um, the scheduling of those masterclasses we're going to be running with all of you in the August 30-day challenge as well. Feel free to reach out if you want to jump in. Yeah, it's a 30-day sales challenge where you can uh, win a two grand, two grand cash prize if you win the game. It's really designed to help you take more courage, hit bigger deals. So we'll be walking you through it. Uh, and hosting that with you in the game. So it's all gamified. It's going to be a lot of fun. So reach out to us. Uh, ticket to that uh, event is $497, Darce. $500 ticket. Yep. yep. So you get a month worth of consulting and training with us uh, and then into the game where you get to compete with 49 other players around the world or up to 49 players around the world. And when it takes on the cash prize, it's good fun. Ripper. Love it, team. Love we'll your work, team. Thanks for joining us for Record Breakers. We'll see you next week. Good Cheers. sesh. Cheers, team.